Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a video, trying to get caught up on everything. I binge watched a bunch of shows yesterday morning while I was off work and I've got some content for a couple of videos. Today we're going to catch up on all things Real Housewives. I've got another video planned for 911, the Connors, and then Leah Remini's back girls. So I'm going to have that ready for you. I watched her two hour special on the Jehovah Witnesses and I know that the new season is starting soon. So that's fixing to be another feature on my channel. I'm obsessed with Leah Remini's content it is great i love watching it i watch it every week i cannot get enough but back to what this video is going to be about it's going to be about some real housewives we're going to talk about atlanta we're going to talk about oc we're going to pop, talk about new jersey and we're going to talk about dallas we've got a couple of shows winding down a sh couple of shows cranking up so we've got a lot of drama to get through so let's get to it i just got off work so still got a little bit of energy Let's start off with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This season seems to be kind of focusing around Portia, her new man, what's going on with her, the tea about her new man, and reconnecting with some prior relationships, fixing some things, some things that I need Portia to do. So, let's get started. So this past week, Portia, is in Miami with her dude. There's there supporting Nene. And the biggest thing I can see with Portia this season is her constant push to be engaged. It's not like a small nudge. This is like every freaking conversation. And that may be how she wants to handle her relationship, but all I can see is big blaring, you know, back up, whoa, slow your roll, sister, you're going to push this man away. So, some men are cool with women constantly pushing to be engaged. Most men, though, are not. And Portia, darling, slow it down. Let it progress. I mean, y'all are in a good spot. Stay in that good spot. Be happy. Be happy with where you are right now. Don't keep pushing that bar because you can push him right out the door. And Candy was right in that scenario. She was like, don't just constantly put out there how much you want to be married. Just let it go. Go with the flow. Let your relationship blossom at the speed that it's going. Don't rush it. Don't be like pour a miracle girl on it to try to get it to come up. Just let it go. I was glad to see Portia and Marlo reconnect, but Marlo, you are a shady ass bitch. Shady, 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 shady. How in the hell do you think it is okay for you to move somebody's bags out of a room just because you don't like the room you have? I don't get this. I'm not big on rooms. Like, if I go somewhere, if we're staying in a hotel room, it could be the size of a closet because I'm going there to go do stuff, not sit in the room. And ladies, y'all don't sit in the room, so I don't get where the big deal is. It's all, like, prestige and points and, oh, well, I have a nicer room and I have a better view and I have this and I have that. Who cares? Y'all are out doing stuff. I mean, the room is basically wash your ass and go to bed. That's what a room is for. I just, I don't understand it. I don't get this thought process. And Marlo, that was shady as shit. And you're lucky that Portia's in a different spot in her life. Because if I walked into the room that I'm paying for and you done move my stuff out, I'm going to show my ass all the way. No problems with it. I mean, I just, I don't get it. But so I'm glad that Portia and Marlo have made up. I'm glad that Candy is kind of being more tolerant of Portia in the group and we're not constantly harping on the same thing. Granted, Portia saying the stuff that she said was wrong and horrible and could have been completely life-changing for Candy, but it, it ended up not ruining her life or her career or the things that she had going on. So at some point... You have to accept that apology and you have to work on that relationship. And I'm kind of glad to see those things are starting to go. 
But it does seem like Atlanta this year is going to be drama, and it seems like it's going to be focused in Porsche's direction yet again. So let's just wait and see what this week's going to be all about. Now, OC. Man, I'm going to need y'all to wind down because I just cannot take this level of petty. I mean, Tamara, you are really going over the line. You ran your mouth about Shannon, and it got back to Shannon. I don't understand where you're so pissed off. I don't get it. Like, you were the one out there saying stuff. Granted, you didn't say the mentally ill stuff, but you said that she is sad, that you feel sorry for her, that she's always crying. I mean, you're putting out there the building blocks that everybody else is just feeding on. And now you want to be mad at Gina because Gina told her. Gina didn't say your name. That was Kelly. And when all of this plays back and you see that that was Kelly, you're going to be sitting there going, you know what, I was really fucking stupid. Because you were really stupid in this instance. Kelly's the one that mentioned your name. So, I mean, you just keep running around. Now you're running around and you're talking about Gina. So you just swapped out Shannon for Gina. And you, you talked to Gina. You told her that you were upset. Gina explained what she said and told you what she said. And at that point, that's where it should have been dropped. But instead, you keep going around and you keep doing the same thing. Now, Emily and Gina, y'all ganging up on the Shannon Tamara drama is unnecessary. Y'all putting your viewpoints into that friendship is unnecessary and you don't know the inner workings of that friendship and you're going to cause a problem doing that. So, chip. Now, I'm going to be honest. I loved seeing Kelly and Michael being at the performance as a united front for their daughter. That was great. I'm a divorced parent. My ex-husband hasn't seen his child in almost four years. My son, this past weekend, just had a play performance. And it was me and my husband now, his stepfather, who is his dad. They're supporting him. Um, at other shows, it was my parents, you know, friends of the family, what have you, but when it comes down to it, when it comes down the line, kids want their parents there, and I'm glad to see Kelly being adult enough to be able to sit there with Michael and go through the performance. I mean, that was that was great. There was no arguing. It was about all about your kid, and that's the way it should be. So, way to go, Kelly. You did something right. Now, I'm going to need you to back up out of everything else, but you're doing something right there. Going on to... Emily's little gathering with the tea reader. Okay, look. I'm going to put it out there. I am Wiccan. I believe in tarot cards and tea reading. And I believe in all of that stuff. But that tea reader just seemed to be so full of it. Like, there are people out there that are just doing this to get paid. And then there are some of us that actually believe in it. And use it in our lives to just make it through our day. And that tea reader just seemed to be like all about the check. So I just kind of looked at that and shook my head. Now Tamara, we're back on you again. You seem to be kind of a running theme of the OC this year. Okay, the old lady party, that was cute. That, that was adorable. Tamara, you really did that. I mean, that was cute. But... You did say you were going to go to Gina's birthday party, and then you just didn't show up. I mean, if you don't want to go, tell somebody you don't want to go. Be adults. I mean, God, y'all are in y'all's 40s. I mean, come on, give me a break. I mean, at some point, you just have to be, look, right now, you're not my favorite person. I don't think I'm coming to your birthday party because, you know, I'm still kind of aggravated even though we've talked this stuff out. I'm still a little aggravated with you. I'm not coming. That's all you would have had to say. You didn't have to pull the whole ignoring people's phone calls and not answering FaceTime and, you know, all of this stuff. You could have just blatantly said when you were invited, I don't want to go. We're not in a good place right now. And that would have been it. I mean, nobody would have been bothered. Now, Gina and Emily, y'all doing that shady ass shit where you're talking and making fun of them while they're on the phone with you. I mean, you know that Tamara's there and Vicky's there and Shannon's there. And y'all are making these con 
comments. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's childish. You're showing your age. You're showing, actually, you're showing younger than your age because you're acting like a bunch of 14, 15, 16-year-old girls at this point, and you're not. <laughs> you're not. I need all of y'all to grow up a little bit. I think there, I think y'all have got way too much bleach in your hair and too much sunshine, something, but I'm going to need y'all chill. I mean, you may not agree with some of the people and you may have issues with them, but sitting there and making fun of people openly on the phone is bull. So stop it. And Tamara, you just had to keep pushing that button with Shannon. Now you want to bring Emily into the mix and talk about how she's comparing Shannon's behavior to her mentally ill mother. Isn't this the same thing that Shannon was doing about Gina's divorce and everybody was down on her about it? I mean, you're just making life observations. Gina made a life observation. Hey, she kind of reminds me of some of the behavior I've seen out of my mom. My mom has mental issues. But, you know, y'all know her better than I do. Emily probably shouldn't have even said it in front of them because here we go. This is fixing to be a shitstorm. Buckle in, darling. You're fixing to have to ride this one out. Because Shannon's not going to let that go. Shannon got pissed at the girls about saying she might need to be on medication with the going through a divorce thing. I mean, how do you think she's going to react with somebody going, well, she's showing symptoms of mental illness. I mean, it's going to be a shit show. That probably should have just been a conversation you had with your husband off camera, maybe. Just saying. But we will see this week. How this is going to turn out. I don't think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be bad. But hey, they could surprise me. So, on that note, we're going to move over to New Jersey. And from the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be another season with Teresa fighting with Joe, fighting with Melissa. It just looks like it's going to be bad. I mean, it's not shaping up well. So, Marge. Your husband is looking you in the face, and I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. Your husband's looking you in the face saying you look just fine. You don't need to change anything. Now, I understand you may look in the mirror and go, oh, but I want to do this, and I want to do that. I mean, I look in the mirror all the time. I'm like, I wish I could get rid of this. I wish I could get rid of my gut. I wish, you know, I didn't have so many, like, little wrinkles under my eyes or the crow's feet forming or these lines on my forehead, but... I'm never going to go to the step of doing plastic surgery because I just don't see the benefit when I start weighing the cost. You're going, they're, they're putting you to sleep. That could be a permanent sleep. I mean, you were freaking out with your mom because the surgery was taking longer than what the doctor told you. Do you want to put Joe through that? Do you want to put your mom through that? I mean... Really and truly, I look at these women and I'm like, y'all look gorgeous. I mean, I, I don't get why you're down on yourselves. I, I don't get it. You have great bodies, perfect faces. You have the money for the perfect wardrobe and the right makeup and makeup artists to come do your makeup for you. While Meanwhile, I'm over here struggling trying to get my contour right and... You know, my highlighter kind of disappeared on me in the middle of the night. And, you know, I don't have anybody to do my hair and makeup. I just have to figure it out on my own. You have enough privilege to make yourself look gorgeous. Get the right skincare program going. Get enough sleep. Lay off some of the alcohol. Boom, you're good. I mean, just saying. Teresa... Teresa, your father's upset. I get it. He lives with you. You hear it. You have to deal with it. I understand. But that's where you look at your dad and go, Dad, you need to talk to Joe about this. You do not need to put your foot in your mouth anymore. These are the same arguments y'all had a few years back. And what happened? There was a huge divide. Your sister laws on her knees begging you just to love the family. And, you know, you're brothers calling you garbage and getting into a fist fight with your husband and I mean do we want to go back to that I mean do we want to repeat the mistakes of a few years ago no you don't this is a conversation where you need to keep your mouth shut completely now 
we're going to move on to Dolores. Dolores and Frank, I mean, y'all have a strange relationship. I'm just going to say it. I've been divorced. I hate if I see my ex-husband's name pop up on my phone. I mean, I don't have to worry about it that often, but every so often it'll pop up on my phone and I don't want to talk to him. I definitely don't want to hang out with him. I don't want to live with him. I mean, y'all have a great relationship. It's good for your kids. Kudos to you. But, I mean, your kids are out of the house. They're in college. Your, hus your ex-husband's still living with you. I mean, it's just, it's weird. It's hard to process. If it works for you, it works for you. But, I mean, just understand everybody else looking at the situation is like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Now, Dolores... You're walking around here with issues with people, and your issues stem from Siggy. Point blank, period. I know you and Danielle butted heads, but your problems with Marge all centered around Siggy's issues with Marge. They were nothing to do with you. So, I need you to drop that one. I need you to also... Chill out a little bit. I mean, you are a very aggressive person, and me being an aggressive person, I can see it, and I can understand it. I'm that way as well, and there are a lot of times that my husband is like, you need to chill. You are way too far out there. I need you to bring it back a little bit, and so, Dolores, I'm going to be my husband's voice in your ear. You need to bring it back a little bit. Chill out a little bit. Now, Danielle, girl... Marge is your friend. She is not your wife. She is not your child. If she wants to have relationships with other people, she can. You went way overboard with this whole thing about her going to the axe throwing party that Dolores organized. You're bawling and you you bring out all the bad stuff. You want to talk about her cheating on her husband and how in the world can you and Dolores get along. You were a cheater. She was cheated on, yada, yada, yada. You went below the belt because your feelings were hurt over your friend having other friends. Are, are you in junior high? Are, are, are you in junior high? Because that is how junior high kids act. Chill out. Marge is still your friend, and she was still sitting there trying to talk to you. And you freak out and walk out and leave her to go, what, what just happened? I mean, that is ridiculous. That is childish. That is immature, and you need to chill out. You and Dolores are on the same page. Both of y'all need to chill out a little bit. I mean, point blank period, y'all need to chill. Now... We're going to go back into the Teresa drama because that has been the big staple of the episode. Easter at Teresa's. It's not so Eastery or fun or family oriented. One, you did not need to get into any family drama issues in front of the kids. You just did not. That was wrong on so many levels and immature and ridiculous i mean that should have been a conversation of call your brother up hey joe i just need to talk to you dad saying this stuff or call melissa hey melissa i just want to let you know dad's been saying this kind of stuff you should have probably given everybody a heads up that your dad was mad before everybody showed up and your dad's like literally cussing at people in front of the children not a good thing. I mean, it's just not. It's not a good thing. And Gia, you need to control your 17-year-old daughter. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, she's 17, but she does not need to be getting involved in anything to do with your brother, your sister-in-law, and your father's relationship. That is not a child's place. She is a child. And you should have told her, Ah, Gia, mind your business. My son is 13. If he was 17, I would still tell him what's his business and what's not his business. And that was just not Gia's business. She does need to stay out of grown people's conversations. That is a grown-up conversation that she did not need to be in the middle of. And Melissa was completely right in calling her out on that. That was ridiculous. Now, if Gia wants to call up her uncle and be like, Hey, Uncle Joe, we need to talk. Grandpa's been saying this and whatever. 
That is something totally different. Y'all are already involved in a dis heated discussion because you've already made Joe mad. You're already involved in a heated discussion, and here comes your 17-year-old daughter sashaying in in something that is not her business. She needs to stay in a child's place. Point blank, period. Get your kids under control because they are wild. Now, Teresa, you made me very aggravated, and I can say that from a place from a person that has to work every single day for the stuff that I have. I have to work every day. My husband has to work every day just to maintain the lifestyle that we have. And I mean, it's not great, but it's comfortable. People have to work. Just because you get to sit at home and run your businesses out of your home and pop off a cookbook here or go and do a speaking engagement here or whatever you're doing to get your money and do you boo, go get your money, whatever. But you're still getting to stay at home every day. You get to go to the gym twice a day. You're living in a very nice home you drive very nice cars you wear very good clothes you have very good bags you have the lifestyle that everybody aspires to does not mean that everybody that has a similar lifestyle gets to live their life that way your brother works he works and i can say that from a person that grew up in a construction family not only did i go, grow up in a construction family but i actually worked construction that is a hard job. And when you get off work, you don't want to deal with anything else. You want to come home. You want to eat. You want to take a shower. You want to chill. You want to relax. You don't want to deal with anything. I can understand your brother's point. I work as a 911 operator. My father is sick with stage 3 cancer. And there are days that when I get off work, I'm like, I really should go see my dad. I really should go do that. But I'm tired. So I'm going home. I'm going to call him and check on him, and then I'm going to go to bed. You know, I mean, and that's not even a physical job. It's just a mental job. Your brother does a physical job. He's in construction. When I was working construction, I would get off work after an eight-hour shift. I would go home and lay down in my floor until I got enough energy to get food because I was tired. And I was much younger. I mean, I was in my teens. Your brother is, one, not a teenager anymore, and two, he is working to support his wife and his kids and give them a lifestyle that he wants them to have. You should respect that and you should understand that point blank. I mean, that's what he's doing. He's not just sitting at home, chilling out, watching TV and not coming by and seeing your dad. He's not just, you know, at a restaurant running the books and decides he doesn't want to come and see your dad. He is working a physical job and is tired and wants to go home and relax. I mean, some of us just don't have that privilege. So you need to lay off your brother. You need to chill out. He is not a child anymore. He is a grown man with a wife and kids and responsibilities. And you need to understand that. If it is so crucial for you. Put your dad in the car. Drive your dad to the work site. Go take your brother lunch. And all y'all can see each other. It's There are things that you can do to foster that relationship that you're not doing. But you're being critical of the relationship. And you need to chill out. So, next week's probably going to be some more Teresa, Melissa, Joe drama. And... That kind of seems to be the tone of the season, so we're just going to see where that goes. We're going to move on to Real Housewives of Dallas. Another one of those shows that are winding down right now. We have OCs winding down, getting ready for the reunion. Dallas is winding down, getting ready for the reunion. So, let's jump into Dallas real quick. Deandra, you do not need to apologize to Cameron. I'm sorry, you don't. Cameron and Leanne have been going on this constant path of attacking you because you're friends with Brandy. And because you're doing what you want to do and you're living your life to for you. And not for Dallas society or what they think is proper or any of that. You did not owe Cameron an apology. I understand that you did the apology to try to like garner, garner some peace and move on from it. I get that. But you did not owe her an apology. She has been constantly attacking you throughout the season. And she should have been apologizing to you. She's the reason why you and Leanne got into it in Denmark. She is the reason why 
y'all are constantly just kind of battling and it's just ridiculous. Now, the dinner. Brandy brought up really good points about Leanne. I mean, she's just showing what kind of person Leanne is and she is just constantly, this is the reason why I don't trust you. I mean, y'all are out there jumping into really cold water naked, which I will never do. Um, but you did it in a, to be a part of what Carrie was experiencing. I get it. I got you. But what does Leanne do? She whips out her cell phone and she starts videoing you while you're naked. After you've had all these problems. I understand you being mad. I would be completely mad. I would have demanded to see her deleted. I would have demanded to see all of her emails afterwards. And made sure it wasn't saved anywhere. Because Leanne's sneaky and shady like that. I get it. I get it. And everybody else should get it. Because this has been a pattern of Leanne's. Girl, you had your points. I'm good. Go, go Brandy. Go, Brandy. Try to wake up some of these other people that are kind of blinded to Leanne. And I don't get why they're blinded to Leanne because everybody has had their issues with Leanne. With the exception of Cameron. And I really think Cameron is scared of Leanne. And that is the reason why she kisses Leanne's ass so hard. That's just my opinion, but that's the way I'm going with it. And Leanne, you have not changed. Girl, you can sit up there in your little confessionals with your bowl and ring it till the cows come home. But you have been backstabbing. You have been secretive. You have been confrontational. You've even tried to get physical with people again this year. You have not changed. This is the same pattern of Leanne that we saw last year and the year before. I mean, this is just Leanne doing all the same things, but saying, but I've changed, and everybody wants the old Leanne, and you're trying to drag out the old Leanne, but I've changed, I've changed. If you've changed, you've changed. And you would show that in how you deal with people. You would show that in how you talk to people, and you would show that through your personal experiences with people. But at this point, you're doing the exact same thing you have always done. So no, nobody blinks that you have changed. Nobody, okay? And pretty much, that was this episode. Leanne constantly doing shady shit. People calling her out on doing shady shit. And boom, there you go. That was Real Housewives of Dallas this past week. So, we covered four Housewives groups this week. I mean, it's getting a little crazy with four different ones going on at the same time. But like I said, we've got two winding down, two cranking up. Atlanta looks like it's going to be kind of crunk this year. New Jersey is generally always crunk because, I mean... They're from New Jersey. OC's winding down, but we still have the same Tamara Shannon drama. And Dallas is winding down, but we still have the same Leanne DeAndra drama. I'm just kind of waiting for these reunions to come up so we can see if anything's been worked out or how bad it actually gets when people look back at what's being said throughout the season. Because these confessionals have been lit, and I'm just waiting to see. So, that ends this video. Hope y'all had fun. If you like the content, go ahead and hit subscribe, ring the bell for when I post a new video, and I will see you on the next one.